Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing today? Um, if you look in your bulletins, you'll notice that today's worship service is different. And the whole idea was for having a day that we're celebrating Camp Sunday, a day in which we support our youth and have a good meal afterwards. The whole idea was to give you a worship experience that the kids that go to Layel, what they feel. So where you see where it says, you know, the meditation, in the morning at camp, they have a time when they get together with their cabins and their cabin mates, and they have a small time of meditation. Time of reflection, that happens in the conversation. They don't do an offering, but it's really bad juju for the church if we don't, and we're doing two of them today. Uh, The regular one that supports the missions and outreaches of the congregation, but we're doing a special noisy offering later on to support the uh, the Grace Centers of Hope, their their daycare center. Is anyone, is everyone aware of that? Yeah? No? Let me fill you in. Uh, This is a mission. They receive no governmental funding which means they can follow the call and plan of God to help the people of their community and the residents the best they can. They take care of the children while the adults are either going through some of their day programs, learning programs, or while they're trying to improve themselves and find work. This is a mission that is desperately needed there in the downtown area of Pontiac and beyond. And our way to support that is to make as much noise this morning when we pass the pots by later on in the service. So please remember that. Please be supportive. You are helping out in extending God's grace and caring for those that are trying to follow God's call by providing and caring for their families. So please come and be part of that. Uh, You'll also notice that on the schedule of events for today at church, after Sunday, we are having our breakfast, and we're doing a Camp Lael-style breakfast. Now, have any of you ever had breakfast at Camp Lael? Do you know what the signature breakfast is at Camp Lael? Cinnamon buns, scrambled eggs, and sausage. Now, most people always want a second cinnamon roll, but there's only enough for one. I don't know, we'll probably have extras here, so we can be a little hedonistic and enjoy the ooey-gooeyness of a wonderful Camp Lael breakfast. So we're going to do that after, and then immediately after that, we're going to go into our transition Bible study. We're going to be starting phase two and looking at who and where we are now. Last two sessions, we're looking at the past, now we're looking at the present. So I hope you can all be part of that. Uh, Reminder, IOC meeting is happening on uh, the 20th, uh, as well as the church council meeting. Um, I understand they've had some great interviews. They're going to report to us uh, at the council meeting about the candidates. At the IOC meeting, we're going to narrow it down to see what we can do and how for these great people. A lot of other things going on. Take a few minutes and look at your bulletin, preferably not during the meditation and reflection. Um... Any other announcements that we need to highlight before we move on? Okay. Before we go into our service, there's a few introductions that I need to make. Come here, you two. I told you that we would have some staff members of Camp Lael with us here today uh, and a former camp pastor. Uh, We have Caitlin Myers here who's going to be leading us in song. Uh, She is this year's program director. So she's going to be part of the programming, what happens and how it affects the kids that are there. Good, bad, and different. Hopefully her hair won't go gray. (laughs) I've been there. (laughs) And then we have Sarah Habert here who has been on staff. You're going to be on staff again this year as a counselor? So they're going to help us out when it comes to the reflection and the music portion, which, you know, we're going to have a campfire experience. We have our little thing. We'll we'll call it the dancing flame. We have our dancing flame. But uh, they're going to take you through a great campfire time. So, you know, I want us to give them a quick welcome and affirmation. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. And Ryan's just sitting here to look good. He does. (laughs) 
Has someone clapped for Ryan? Awesome. Uh, there are a few things that we need to add to the prayer list this morning as we go into our time of morning prayer to open this worship service. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, and Jeff and all of his heart conditions, this Wednesday he's going to be having an ablation, which it was the ablation that started the whole thing in the first place, that helped discover the defects that he had, really a God thing that allowed the surgeries to improve his heart, and now he's going back to have this procedure done, so we need to remember him uh, this week. Uh, there's been a few other things that have come across in the, uh, in the uh, emails that I've seen for prayer requests. One of them for Tim McGregor, who is currently in hospital. Um, uh, Holly uh, Hohenstein, who is, she's in her 90s. She's not doing too well. Her good friend Anne is kind of worried about her, so she'd like us to pray for her. And then uh, we have Marie Kegelman, who is adjusting to life in a nursing home. I have no idea what any of these tragedies are like, but I know that the power of prayer and the presence of the Holy Spirit can do wonderful things. So let us take some time to come together in prayer, asking God to be with us and remembering these individuals, and then we will press on with our Camp Sunday. Would you all pray with me, please? Awesome and most loving God, we gather this morning in your house to worship you, to feel close to you, to take what you give us in this hour of worship and carry it with us into the world so we can share your love and your grace and your power with others. But we can't do that in this hour without your spirit coming and being among us. So please, God, come be with us. Open our hearts our minds to the way that you will take us in this hour-long journey. Open our abilities and our willingness, O oh God, to serve you in new and vibrant ways. Carry us, O oh God, through the times of our tragedy and struggle, and push us, O oh God, into places where your love needs to be shared and exemplified to those that we encounter in this world. We ask of this, O oh God, and give ourselves to you, knowing that there are times and places that we do not always listen, we do not always respond, we do not always serve you, we will serve our egos. And in those moments, O oh God, we ask your forgiveness. Forgiveness of when we sin against you, when we sin against others, when we sin against ourselves. And in that forgiveness, O oh God, that you grant to us, we are restored, the slate is wiped clean, and we get to start over because the power and the presence, the blood of your son Jesus that was shed on that cross, making it possible for us to be here this morning to worship and to feel your presence. In the coming week, O oh God, we ask that you watch over those who are struggling with health issues. For Jeff and his upcoming heart ablation, for Tim, who is in the hospital with the pancreatitis. For Dolly, as she is not doing well these days, just send your presence upon her, O oh God. Give her heart, mind, and body peace. And for those that are caring and worrying about her, extend that same grace and peace to them. We also remember Marie Kegelman as she's adjusting to this new phase of her life. Transitioning and adjustment is never easy, O oh God, but when you are there and at the center of it all, you can make the difficult things easy, and you give us opportunities to grow and adjust. So be with Marie as she does that in the time of the nursing home, because you, O oh God, are a God who watches over us and loves us and cares for us, and it promises to always be there with us. So in this hour and in this place, as we pray and worship you in a Camp Lael style, make it one that glorifies you. We give ourselves and what we do to you in this hour. In your son's precious and most holy name. Amen. So I'm assuming a few of you have been to Camp Lael. How many? Oh, not nearly enough. But I'll take with that. How many of you, when you've left the camp, have read what's on the back of the sign? One, and what does it say? 
Anyone remember? Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold. That passage, when they named Camp Lael, it was based on Romans 12, 1 and 2, which reads, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Right now in the life of the church, we are going through a study and a series of walking by faith and not by sight. I always think of the back of that sign of Camp Lael that says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold, because that is a statement, a declaration of walking by faith and not by sight. Because Paul is reminding us, he is calling us, he's even challenging us to recognize that the way of the world and the way of our Lord are in complete and utter opposition to each other. The world teaches us to look out for number one and trust no one because no one can do things as well as you can. But the teachings of Scripture, the power and presence of God in our lives, says don't try to be in control. Let me be in control. Don't carry your burdens. Let me carry your burdens. Don't let the mistakes you've made hold you back in your mind. I have sent my son to forgive you and wash them clean so you don't have to feel it and carry it. That is not letting the world squeeze us into a mold. A mold that says, you are nothing unless you have the latest gadget. Unless you're the most popular, unless you have the flashiest car, the nicest house, all the toys, that is the world. Bleed yourself dry financially. Don't think about tomorrow because you know something? You may not see it. There is no hope for a future. But in walking by faith and not by sight, in these words that are on the back of that sign, reflecting the words of Paul, there is always hope. And there's always a power and a presence that's greater than ours. And that presence I call God. A loving, powerful, giving presence that is always there and always wanting to be with us. There is one place on earth right now that I know that I can go to and feel it every time I set, set foot on its grounds. And for me that place is Camp Lael. I've had a relationship with Camp Lael for over 40 years. I have memories of walking around it as a toddler. I have memories of three separate directors, countless numbers of staff, a lot of dirt on the current director, Jim Davis, because he and I go back a long way. I can walk through that place and show you where my grandfather, the carpenter, built things. Where my other grandfather and father, the electricians, did the wiring. I can show you where I've gotten stuck in ponds. The lagoons. And I can tell you stories about how I've watched people who had no idea who God was start to have an understanding. And those who did have an idea who God was Watch that awareness grow. To me personally, Lael helps me walk by faith and not by sight. Not because it's a place that I go to, but it's a state of mind that I enter. You see, I can't use my cell phone there. I'm not tempted to do all the latest toys and tricks and gadgets. I become one with God's creation in a place that belongs to God, which, if any of you are aware of, that's what the word Lael means, belonging to God. 
And the director and the staff for the summertime and all the winter weekends, they work very hard for everyone who enters those grounds, whether they're there for a Christian experience or not, to have a feeling of belonging that this place is for them. They walk by faith and not by sight, and they allow us to do the same. That's what I love about Camp Lael. And that's why I keep going back at every opportunity that I get. Why do you love Lael? What's one of your favorite things about it? Why are you returning as staff members? Why are you sitting in that chair? <laughs> I've given you my thoughts and ideas about Lael. But I think Camp Sunday should be more than just, hey, let's get together, do things differently, and support our youth. I see this as a time of building community and relationships and sharing memory and experience. So I have the roving mic. And anyone who'd like to share a reason of why they go to Lael, what they love about Lael, I'm going to bring the mic to you. So who'd like to start it off? What I love about Camp Lael is the memories it brings back of um, our daughter when she was in Youth Leader Corps. It was one of the sites that was used by Youth Leader Corps, and many of the churches in our, in our uh, denomination have participated in that over the years. And a special time was when I was a sponsor for one of those students who was here today. It's going to bring tears to my eyes, but um, Heather and the times we had there when she was a Youth Leader Corps member. Anyone? Um, I was up there as a chaperone for a couple of years. and um, One of the things I remember the first time I was up there was um, the table game that is played with the cups. Anybody remember those? <laughs> it's, um, it's just a, a game that the whole table plays and it's a certain way you turn a cup upside down and click and stuff. And uh, it was amazing how many coordinated people, except me, that was up there. <laughs> that was one thing I remember. The second thing I remember was uh, it was a winter time. We were up there, and uh, everyone knows the hill. Yeah, Flagpole Hill. And uh, it's a place where you can go up and toboggan down. And I remember in my youth, I used to love skateboarding. So one of the kids offered me a snowboard. Now, I've never been on a snowboard my entire life. And... Uh, I said, God, get me down the hill. And I have never had so much fun on a snowboard in my entire life. I didn't fall off. It was like being on that old-fashioned roller board. And uh, just had a lot of fun up there. It was a, quite a growing experience, and I, quite, I really enjoyed it. So um, I've gone to Camp Lale for, I think, four, five years now. <laughs> And uh, I started to drift away from it, and I had her as a sub, and I can't remember where right now. Don't bring that up. <laughs> I had Kaylin as a sub for my band class, and I was sleeping in band class. She comes up and says, "Hey, spaghetti." Well, see, last year I've been force-fed spaghetti, and that was my new nickname. So uh, it's reason to go back, you know, to have more time, more fun times, and, uh, you know, experience the grace of God there. You know, so that's why I'm going to go back. Growing up in Oregon, my camp experiences were in a camp called Arawana at the foothills of Mount Hood, which is a wonderful place to be. So I have a lot of memories from that. So when I came to Michigan, it was pretty easy to connect myself with Camp Lael. But by now, uh, I was doing other kinds of things. So Chuck Armstrong got me there to do parenting classes and spiritual life retreats. 
So my memories there are really wonderful. Some of the gorgeous retreats and things like at our retreats, we would do foot washing and uh, some silent times out in the woods. So it, uh, to me, it's a time of real spiritual renewal. And I still, to this day, remember at uh, Camp Arowana, there's a little trail that went off. It was a place where we really weren't quite supposed to go, but I was trying to get off by myself. And there I found this huge, I mean, make, you, you have to be from the Northwest to know how big stumps can get. And uh, it was very old. I could see how the tree had fallen a long time ago into the woods. It had all kinds of moths and lichens and little ferns and flowers growing in it. But there was a log right across the, the path. And I found that I liked to sit on that log. And that be, kind of became an altar in the woods for me. And to this day, I still go and sit on that log in front of the altar in the woods. About 72 years ago, when I was 10 years old, I, Bethany's youth went to uh, Lake Louise camp. And I started, and I went uh, for the next four years. I m many wonderful memories there. I love the, everything from the workshops to the Vesper services. Now I'm really happy that our two granddaughters attended uh, Camp Lael. And uh, we were up there for the services when they each graduated from the Youth Leadership Corps. They loved it, and they remember um, many times that their, their spiritual growth really grew, uh, both here at Bethany and at Camp Lael. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful that they had that opportunity. My memories are of uh, camp up in... Um, Camp Adaloa in uh, Ocean Park, Maine. It's also a Baptist camp, and uh, it cost twenty dollars a week. <laughs> but it was so wonderful in the uh, in those pine trees, and and they had a camp for the girls and a camp for the boys. We weren't even together, and uh, it was just a wonder. It was four hours from where I lived in Rhode Island, but our, that's where we went to camp. I have countless memories of Camp Layal, but my two favorite things about Camp Layal is the quietness, how you can just get away from your technology. You don't have cell phone service there, so you can't be tempted to look at your cell phone, and just to get out and be quiet. And my favorite place to sit and think is on top of Flagpole Hill at night. You can see the most beautiful stars there. And also just the connections you make with people. Um, people are so friendly at Camp Layal, and it, it's just amazing how everyone just includes you. You don't feel like an outsider at camp. You're part of the group. Well, when I was growing up, I had some really wonderful experiences at church camp. And, and so I've always uh, valued that uh, as part of my life and also valued it as something important for the life of the church. Then when uh, Lori came along, uh, when she was in the fourth grade, uh, she went, her, well, that was her first experience at camp, and it was like uh, a partial week kind of a thing, just to kind of get your feet wet. But from that point on, uh, for the next 10 or so years, that was the highlight of, uh, of her year, and, and then she went on to be, become a counselor. So... I, I have a lot of fun memories of uh, Camp Lael. Um, one of my favorite ones was a few summers ago when I CIT'd. Um, we, they, we were in a week where it was intro camp, so they left on Wednesday, and the camp that I CIT'd for was, I think, 5th and 6th, so they were there till Friday. And when the intro camp left on Wednesday, we just had, like, some free time to just, like, swim and stuff because it was a really nice day, so they just took them down. I think they, like... Um, put the activity for swim time in, so they had extra time at swim time, and they were just, like, so happy to be down there, and it was just cool, because it was just a long week so far, and it was only Wednesday, and it was just swim time, and they were just, they were just so happy to be there, and it was just so cool to see them so happy in the water, so that's one of my favorite memories so far. Didn't go to Camp Lael as a kid, went to another Baptist camp on the uh, other side of Detroit there. But then when we came here, then Tom got introduced to Lael. 
And I would listen to all the stories that he had and the closeness that he got with God when he was there. Then now, you know, his kids going. And when they come back and they tell the closeness and, and, and the relationship that they re- are feeling with God, it kind of brings back all those memories of when Tom went and then back when I went. And I just think that uh, instilling this in your children and supporting it, you know, we don't know what it's going to do, but later on when they start telling those stories, we know that it really meant something to them. I was introduced to Camp Lael in my freshman year of college. My RA and her family were very, very involved with Camp Lael. And she suggested to me that I should apply to work there. So at the end of my sophomore year, I applied. And uh, they were sort of short staff that year. There was a lot of new people. And I walked, I walked into the first day of training, like 15 people who'd known each other their whole lives and gone to camp together and said, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, my goodness, these people are crazy. But I love camp, and this is, I'd worked at a different camp before, so I said, all right, here we go. And I, uh, by the end of the summer, um, my heart had a very new place, and now my heart is, um, <laughs> the part of my, my heart that is not filled for my students as a teacher is filled with Camp Lael and the kids there. And it's um, nice for me, because not only do I work in the summer, but I'm the only staff member who's done with college, so... When they need extra help on a weekend, I'm the one who's not in school, and I get the phone call that says, Caitlin, we're trying to feed 300 people this Saturday because it's Girl Scouts and work weekend, and I know you're going to another church on Sunday, but do you think you could come out? And I say, sure, how bad could that be? But the mess hall only seats 160, and by dinner time last night, I just wanted to crash, but then I had to drive home at 9 o'clock. So this is, but I love every minute of it, and I, I love the exhaustion, and I love all the planning that goes into everything and the way that I watch the staff work together to solve problems and just to love on these kids who some of them have never been to camp before, but they're 15, and they share with you a very real experience that's heartbreaking. And sometimes it's such an experience that, by law, I can't keep that to myself, and I have to go take that to someone else to get them the help that they need. And for a little bit, they're so, so angry that, you know, because they think that you've betrayed their trust, but then down the road they come back to you and they're just so grateful because you're the first person who's listened and done something. And those light bulbs that click with them. Um, sometimes it's just indescribable the way that you see, you know, they'll be in their Vespers time in the evening with the camp pastor and eyes, their eyes will flash. And you understand, oh, they just got that. And they come to you and they ask questions and they're learning. So not only are they having fun swimming and playing volleyball and playing pranks on each other, but they're growing closer to the Lord. And to be able to put all those things in one place that, that every camper describes, the first word, you say, what's one word that describes Camp Lael? And they all say the same thing. It's safe. It's a safe place. No one's going to hurt me there. You know, no kids are going to hurt me there. Nothing bad can happen to me because, you know, as, as Paul ex- explained, Lael means belonging to God. This is a place that is of the Lord, and nothing's going to happen to me. And I know I'm loved here. And that is a feeling that I think even the staff get to. Um, we turned down, our address is 2062 Ferns Road, and we turned down Ferns Road uh, coming in for the summer, and there's just, you get so excited. You got half a mile to drive down the road, but it's like you're a fourth grader on Christmas. You're too excited to speak as you turn down that, uh, turn down that road, and you pull under that sign. It says Detroit Baptist Camp on the front, and then... Uh, do not let the world around you squeeze you into its mold on the way out, you know. Drive under that sign and you know, like, I'm home, I'm safe. And that's just a feeling I don't have anywhere else. So it's my favorite place in the world. And uh, for as long as I teach and have free time in the summer, I will be back running that program because uh, it just means a lot to me. So. Hi. <laughs> Um, my name's Sarah. Um, I have been a counselor. Well, my first year I was a counselor. Last year I was everything because people <laughs> on the staff kept getting hurt. So last year I was the craft director. I was a lifeguard and a camp counselor from week to week. Ooh. Um, but anyways, I think my favorite memory of camp, um, non-camper, was probably last year, um, senior high week, um, 
It was a really cool experience, actually. It was the last night, and we had the speaker, and he was just, like, really good. The youth really paid attention to him, which, like, I feel like, I mean, it happens, obviously, but it's just, like, really cool experience when you see, like, you know, um, high schoolers paying attention. <laughs> um, but anyways, and uh, everyone was, like, hugging on each other, crying. Like, it was only supposed to be an hour long, and it turned into, like, probably four hours, I think. It was crazy, but um, that was probably definitely my favorite experience just to see, like, you know that not only did the youth pastor of that, like, week help, but you also helped them get closer to God. Um, But that's probably my favorite. And I think the reason why I keep coming back to camp um, isn't necessarily for myself because I'm not going into student teaching. I'm actually going into interior design, which is, like, a whole different, like, (laughs) virtue. Um, I definitely do it for the kids. Um, I love seeing kids growing towards God and feeling at home because a lot of them will tell me stories just like Caitlin said and you're just like oh my gosh and when you have like a young child come up to you and be like wow you're like the only family I have it like tugs on your heart and definitely makes you like want to come back. So that's the reason why I come back year to year. (laughs) So for those of you that have never set foot on camp or have been part of anything there, you're hearing a common thread through what everyone's saying. God is there, and I am welcome. And everyone walked away with a good, powerful memory. For me, it's what feeds me to the days in which I return. I hope it does the same for the others. But You can't merely just talk about Lael and put it into words. It is something that you truly have to experience. So my plug for Camp Lael, before we go into our time of offering, is if you haven't been there, don't look for an, a reason. Merely find an excuse and go check it out. It is truly an amazing place that belongs to God and allows us to belong to God with it. So thank you for your reflections. We're going to move now into our uh, time of offering. Our youth are serving as our ushers today, so they need to go get in position to...
help out and sing along. And some of these songs will require some physical participation, so you might have to kind of get up and move. It's going to be cool. It's all yours. Okay. I'm going to do my best not to shout at you because I teach high school, so I'm loud. I work at summer camp, so I'm loud. And I'm mic'd. So if I end up being super loud, um, somebody give me a dirty look, and I will tune it down because that's what my kids do at school when I'm getting super excited. Because I teach high school, and they look at me like I'm a fool because I work at summer camp, so I'm always dancing around and getting too into things. And what are you doing? You know. So I'll do my best to sort of uh, not overwhelm you here. This first song um, is intended to help get you a little loosey-goosey, uh, maybe a little out of your comfort zone. They don't even know it that well. It's so complicated, we only do it like once a summer because it's big. It's a lot of nonsense words. So don't panic too much. I'll just do our best. Um, not a big deal. So this one, because it's nonsense words, we give you a beat to help you remember it. So the beat is just a simple... There you go, everybody. All right, this is a repeat after me song. Which this is a repeat after me song. Okay, and what that means, don't speed up. What that means is that I'll give you the line and the kids behind me will repeat it. You follow with them. Practice a couple times to get started to make sure you understand how it goes. Flee! Flee! Flee, fly. Flee, fly. Flea, fly, flow. Flee, fly, flow. La vista. La vista. All right. And I'm speeding up now because I'm excited. Okay. That's perfect. We'll go like that the whole time. Ready? Flee. Flee. Flee, fly. Flee, fly. Flee, fly, flow. Flee, fly, flow. La vista. La vista. Cum laude, cum laude, cum vista. Oh, no, 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 not La Vista. No, 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 not La Vista. Eeny, meeny, dice the meeny, ooh, walla, walla, meeny. Cool. Ah. Eeny, meeny, solid, meeny, ooh, all the way. Praise you, the Lord. You got them? You guys want to split? Yeah. All right. So this is an oldie. Some of you might be pretty familiar with this one. We'll start for you. Uh, we'll do it once, and then we will show you how to do it. So if you're a hallelujah, you sing the hallelujahs, and if you're a praise ye the Lord, you sing the praise ye the Lord's. But when it's your turn to, to sing, stand, put your hands in the air, something. All right? So we go like this. You guys ready? You got this? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You guys got that? Okay. That's the way the song goes. We'll do it a couple times. 
You, know, you guys know this one. We do this one every single night. Okay. All right, here we go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. is winning. They're winning the loud contest. Let's see um, how loud you guys can belt it out over here, my praises, and see if you can match, match their volume over here. All right, one more time. Are we ready? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That was great. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Excellent. 